Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to take a look into I2C protocol and for those purposes I will be using the discovery board. If you have one it's great because we will not have to create any additional connections using any wires. However, if you have any other board such as this Nucleo board, it is a little bit more complicated because we have to connect some external sensors. One additional point in regards to this discovery board, there are two generations of them and there is a tiny difference that I'm gonna cover in today's video. So let's begin. With help of our Rust book, let's take a look at I2C, a serial communication protocol described in chapter 14. I2C stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit and it is synchronous serial protocol which means that we have a dedicated clock line in I2C called SCL and we have a dedicated data line, SDA. Our F3 board has two sensors connected over I2C, accelerometer and magnetometer. Those two sensors are connected with our microcontroller using SDA and SCL lines and no additional wires are necessary. So before we start implementation, it's really, really important to understand the correct order of operations which happen in the I2C protocol. There is a master and slave communication. However, there is a movement to start using different words such as controller and peripheral. This is the order of communication for sending the information from the controller to the peripheral as well as the peripheral responding back to the controller. The order of operation is extremely important and it really depends from which side are you going to be programming your I2C. In our case it's going to be the controller to peripheral because we are programming our microcontroller. So the main question is how do you know what is your I2C address? In case of the F3 discovery board, we are either using the LSM303 DLHC or AGR. If you have the older board, you're gonna be using AGR. However, if you have a new board, DLHC. In this case, let's scroll down to the contents and there is I2C operations, let's go in, let's keep scrolling, I2C operations, there is a lot of a lot of details, but here we can see the 7 bit address of our sensor. This one is for the acceleration, so we are going to be working with a magnetic field, so in this case this is our default address. If you would like to understand more about the I2C bus, I highly encourage you to read this document from Texas Instrument that I have attached into the description. It gives you far more details how exactly I2C works and what is open drain and how to really make things running faster. When it comes to I2C, there are a lot of important details. However, I would like to mention three, probably the most important ones. Let's start with possible speeds. One is the standard node and second is the fast mode. Probably these two, 100 and 400 kilobits, are the most common bi-directional communication methods used by I2C. According to this table and to the specifications, you can achieve higher speeds, however, it is less common. I personally never worked with an ultra fast mode which is unidirectional and as you see the way to achieve it is to drop the open drain method but start using push pull. Second very important feature is clock stretching. The target device can hold the clock line that indicates that they are not yet ready to process more data. The third thing is to remember that addresses are 7 bits long and there is a possibility of a collision. The more devices you have on the same SDL and clock line, the higher the chance of the collision. This problem is called birthday problem. In our case, we do not have dates such as month and day, 
but a 7-bit address of I2C member. Okay, team, so let's start working on the I2C solution that is going to work for our exercise. Let's start with documentation for our F3 discovery board. From here, we're gonna go into the docs.rs because the idea is not to reinvent the wheel. As we see, this crate uses the STM32F3XX hull. Let's go in. Then under the modules, we can see I2C. And something extremely helpful is to take a look at this example of I2C scanner. This is an example of working I2C communication protocol. Let's take a look what's happening in the main function. Starting from unwrapping the device peripherals, grabbing the pointers to a flash and RCC, setting up the clock, splitting the GPIO sector B, and now the interesting part is to configure the clock line and data line. In our case of the board, every discovery, the clock line is PB6, which we can take a look in the documentation, and the data line is PB7. Both of those ports we have to configure as open drain, same as we saw in the Wikipedia page. On the line 39 and 40, we are putting internal pull-up, which I believe is not necessary in case of our discovery board because we have resistors already doing that uh, work for us. The last bit is to create that I2C struct where we are passing the I2C1, both of the pins. We are setting the frequency. Here it's 100, probably because we are using internal pull-ups, but we can try make it running with 400 kilohertz for our board. We are passing the clock and one of the registers. From that point, all we have to do is to use this I2C struct and have a function called write. We have a function write and write read. Given that example, let's try to build our own functional I2C communication with our sensor on the board. This is the code example from one of our previous videos where we are printing hello world in the infinite loop. So let's start modifying this code to make the I2C protocol running. I will move the hello print just up here. And what I'm going to do is I will copy the most important five lines from the example where we are taking those device peripherals, flash, RCC, clock, and GPIO B. The next important step is, as I mentioned, is to create the correct clock line and it stays exactly the same. It's the PB6 on the open drain setup as well as the data line, which is PB7 open drain. From that point, I'm not going to add the internal pull-ups because we have those resistor pull-ups on the board. So the last bit is to really create the I2C1 struct. And I will give it a try with 400 kilohertz. Let's see if the communication is working. And as we see, that is all the setup we have to do for our I2C. And the last thing that we have to do, let's create a mutable buffer that is just size of one byte. And we are going to try to make a write read. So we are trying to access the magnetometer and register who I am. I forgot to define those two constant variables at the top over here. So in case of my board, my magnetometer has slightly different address because it's the old version. And the who am I register for F is something we're going to discuss very shortly. Let's cargo build. I have the discovery board connected to my laptop. So let me open the connection with it and cargo run. As we see, the hello world keeps printing. This is not what we are expecting. I will stop it here. I will quit. I have to save the file because I forgot to save it. And I will cargo run once more. We are having some errors, but 
It's about the mutability of SDA and SCL, which should be fine. And what do we see here on the right hand side in the terminal is that our board printed the hello world once as expected and continuously keeps on printing the value 64. To understand why it's a value 64, we have to take a look into the documentation of the magnetometer. But given that, I'm going to stop both of those terminals. And this is the final code for our I2C solution. Okay, so in case of my F3 discovery board, I have the old version with the AGR. So let's control F, search for F. Yes, that's the one. For F is who am I? And the register allows us to identify the device. It's read only. And the value we should be expecting is this one. So if we convert this binary, it's 64 which matches what our I2C write read is responding to us. One last note at the end of this video, I would like to show you that there are quite a big differences between different hall crates for different STM32 series. For example, F3 series and all the family of those microprocessors is quite different from the G series. And it could be a situation that the code just doesn't work when you copy paste. So you really have to go into the documentation and notice how different traits are implemented and what really you can do and how can you really make those things up and running. Even the I2C protocol, which should be the same, have those little differences. So I encourage to really spend some time in the documentation each time when you are building your own code. That would be all for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have learned something new about making the communication between microcontroller and I2C sensors. Please don't forget to like this video, leave the comment down in the comment section, especially if you have some requests for future videos or maybe there is something unclear in this video. I'm more than happy to answer those comments. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because there is every Wednesday, 6.30 Sydney time, a new video coming up. Thank you for making me a part of your day and I hope to see you soon. Bye.